Top Cut. Hello, everybody, and welcome into today's episode of the Top Cut Yu-Gi-Oh! Podcast. Before we get too far in, I, of course, want to thank all of our wonderful patrons. So, a huge thank you to Austin Johnson, Salux, Kane Martin... Damian Zink, Marshawn Jones, Master of Isa, Mr. Herbie's Witchcraft Remain 2022, Zephyrius, AD, Aaron Gardner, Anthony Leela, Opelousa is a Floodgate, Dank Nugs, Dank Nugs again, now Dino DNA, Kevin Hugh, Mountain Man, Mythoceanus, Owen Alvarado, Pig, Rudolph, Seth Um, Sneaky Links, Chris Myers, MBT's Hard Leg, Ray Powell, Slaking It Up, Sunny Sweet, and Zyphorus. Thank you all so much for your continued support of the podcast. Of course, we want to take just a moment to let you know Please don't forget, our playmat is available on ImperiumDuelist.com. There's a link in the description down below if you would like to support the podcast doing that. Also, if you want to get a shout out on the podcast, be sure to go ahead and let us know that you bought the playmat. And we're, we plan on putting a list together and thanking everybody that went ahead and bought the playmat on the podcast. So... Also, if you want to support the podcast at no extra cost to you, be sure to check out our TCG Player affiliate link, which is in the description down below. If you're on Apple or Spotify, please be sure to go ahead and leave us a rating or review. That helps out a lot. You have really have no idea. If you're on YouTube, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let us know your thoughts on all the things that we're talking about. And of course, be sure to join our Discord. There's a link to that on the link tree that's down below. And if you are wanting to follow us on Twitter, you can find us at Top Cut Podcast. Now that we have all of the plugs out of the way, let's go ahead and do a little bit of quick play news. What do you say? Oh, yeah. So we have a couple of really cool little things to talk about. First of all, we have the new V Jump manga was announced. And this will, at the very least, be a Sky Striker based manga because it's got like a silhouette of Ray on it. Uh, we don't really know too, too much else about it other than that it will be Sky Striker themed. So we don't know if it's going to be lore, if it's going to be actually just about this, uh, the Strikers themselves, what the deal is there. But Or or is it just like a, a completely unrelated story using those characters? Right. Um. So in the actual little blurb they have about it, uh, it states, Tales will be spun about the story of a Yu-Gi-Oh! official card game, Cards. The new manga is slated to begin next month. Yes. So, we will have that coming soon, and I would imagine that we're going to get a bunch of Sky Striker support to kind of yeah. go um, with it. It's also known if this is just kind of a one-off deal with just Sky Strikers, or if afterward they're going to do it with, like, some of the other things. I would love to see an actual manga explaining all the lore behind the dogmaticas and the tri brigades and yeah that, yeah that whole albaz lore that would be really cool yeah so next we a little bit of quick play news we have is we have ots tournament pack 19 so the description is elevate your game in 2022 with ots tournament pack 19 ots tournament packs are not for sale items and are provided exclusively to kde united states official tournament stores so make sure to reach out to your local ots store for details ots tournament packs reward duelists who enter tournaments at an ots with a chance to pick up cards that are useful for building decks using newly introduced or revamped strategies as well as foil upgrades also, OTS tournament packs are the only way duelists can get a hold of ultimate rare cards. OTS tournament pack 19 follows suit, introducing three new ultimate rare cards, including Fallen of Albaz, a dynamic monster card that unlocks relentless dragon type fusion monsters from the extra deck. Combine with cards from structure deck Albaz Strike and get ready to duel in style. The OTS Tournament Pack 19 set contains 29 cards, 16 commons, 10 supers, 3 ultimate rares, content subject to change. And this is set to release on June the 10th of 2022. That's cool. Yep. Always a cool thing to have is another tournament pack coming. Oh, yeah. So that'll do it for quick play news. We can go ahead and get on into the main topic of conversation today. So, we have a bunch of new cards to read off, but before we get... Actually, you know what? Let's do the new cards, and then we can talk a little bit about YCS Charlotte. What do you say? Yeah, yeah. Let's... let's Yeah. Stick to the cards. Okay, yeah. so uh, why don't we just go ahead and start with the Labyrinth one real quick. Get that one quickly out of the way. It's just one card. Yeah, also, I also want to say um, we know that 
about two episodes ago when we were talking about the OCG ban list, we mentioned that there was Night Assailant coming off to three and we were like, oh, okay, well, loops, brother, but... They errated it. Yeah, so we mentioned um, it in the details of that because it happened in between when we recorded the episode release but it is worth noting that night assailant is receiving an erratum to where he can he can fetch any flip monster except night assailant yeah he literally yeah the literally just made where he can't fetch himself makes sense yeah um so we just want to go ahead and put that out there officially saying it yeah yeah. all right so uh sure let's talk a little bit about labyrinth servant Ariane. yes level four dark fiend effect monster 1800 attack 1100 defense it can only use the first and second effects of this card's name each once per turn. 1. Send a normal trap from your hand or set on your field to the graveyard. Splash summon a level 4 lower fiend monster from your deck in defense position except herself. And this is set to release in Deck Builder's Tactical Masters. Yeah. Uh, 2. If a monster leaves the field due to an effect of your normal trap card, you can draw one card. Then you can apply the following. 1. Either splash summon a fiend monster from your hand or 2. Directly set a spell or trap from your hand. Okay, well, it's interesting. It helps the deck out a lot, I think, but... Oh, yeah, but, I mean, could you imagine, like, having this on board, uh, compulsing your opponent's monster and then just setting a new one? I mean... Then turn clock comes back to you, just compulse one of their negates. <laughs> the deck is really interesting. I don't know if it's good, but it's it's something. It's interesting. Yeah, well, I, I don't think we have enough wrinkles on our brain to figure out exactly how the deck is actually going to function function when we get it it did get just get top four at a tournament in old ocg land yeah but that could also be due to it was running triple reasoning triple monster gate jesus because that's a thing they have over there yeah um well barring that it's also got what i like to call new toy syndrome yeah because because it's new so a lot of people are going to be playing it but also a lot of people aren't going to know how to stop it one of the really interesting things about the Labyrinth decking, the the, 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 um, the strategy of the deck to me, is that if you really think about it, milling out your opponent isn't like necessarily what wins you the game, right? Well, Mr. Rune is the one that does all the milling. Oh, 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 I was just thinking about Mr. Rune. Okay. Yeah, no, this is the one that like just constantly keeps recurring and getting free yeah the, traps. okay so okay so mr rune is the one that just got top four in the in, in the oc yes which it's really interesting because the more people see people talking about mr rune the more people talk about how it is less a mill your opponent out to win the game and more mill your opponent enough to where they lose their combo pieces yes so like an example would be in the tcg it would mill out like desk bots and stuff yeah or like or like let's say you banish the top five and one of them just so happens to be dasher or celestial exactly or even worse uh both copies of fusion destiny it's its entire purpose i think in this for us would be to just straight up mill out all the single combo pieces right and bricks that people don't want to draw but by having them milled out they can't even utilize them to begin well that's not even just milling them it's banishing banish milling them which, for some decks, they don't care. Yeah. Like Thunder Dragon. Um, You know, Thunder Dragon, I think, would actually be thankful for no, that. No, they're banished face down. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, no. I, 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 I spaced on the fact they're banished face down. Never mind. Yeah. Um, Let's go ahead and move on. Yeah. So, next we have the Gem Knight support to talk about. Woo! So, it's not even in Knights of the Paroxene. Yeah, it's not in Duelist of Paroxene. It's in Power of the Elements. So... Um, ooh, you gem knight players eating good. Yeah, yeah, the gem knight uh, buyouts getting rewarded for the wrong reasons. <laughs> yep. So first you have gem knight quartz. It is a level four fairy effect monster, fifteen hundred attack, fifteen hundred defense. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. One, if your opponent controls a monster, you can discard this one, this card, set one fusion continuous spell directly from your deck. Also, you cannot special on monsters from the extra deck for the rest of this turn except gem knight monsters. If this card is used as material for a fusion summon and sent to the graveyard or banished, you can add one gem knight monster from your deck to your hand except gem knight quartz. It's not bad. It's all right. Yeah. I also, mean, it does a lot for the deck, but also it's know. an earth fairy. Yep. Next, you have Brilliant Rose, level two light rock effect monster, 500 attack, 500 defense. This card is always treated as a gem knight card. So if it says always, that means in the deck too. <clears throat> yeah. 
You can only use the first effect of this card's name once per turn. One, you can discard one Gem Knight or Melodious card, special summon this card from your hand. Two, and once per turn, you can send one Gem Knight or Melodious monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. This card's name type and attribute become the sent monster's original name type and attribute until the end phase. Can be a cool extender. Not only, not only is it an extender, it's also a substitution. Yeah. So, you know, so it's like, uh, oh no, I don't. Um, so it's like, oh no, I have all the fusion stuff, but I need the specific monster still in my deck, and you have that. Well, it's in my extra deck. Yeah. So, um, Gem Knight Lady Rose Diamond, L Earth Fairy Fusion Effect Monster, level 8, 2700 attack, 2400 defense. One Gem Knight Monster and one Fairy Monster. One, the first time a Gem Knight monster you control will be destroyed by card effect during each opponent's turn, it is not destroyed. And two, when your opponent activates a monster effect during your turn, quick effect, you can banish one Gem Knight card from your graveyard, then target one face-up monster your opponent controls and destroy it. Very keyly, this is missing a once per turn. Oh yeah. So every time your opponent activates a monster effect during your turn, you can banish a Gem Knight and pop a card. Yep. Crazy. As long, you know, up until you run it over, because I don't, it's not... Well, it's pretty beefy. Not like amazingly big, but I mean, 27's enough. Yeah, it's it's enough. Like yep. just enough. <laughs> Next, we have Scatter Fusion. This is a continuous spell. You can only use the first effect of this card's name once per turn. One, if your opponent controls a monster, you can fusion summon one non-rock Gem Knight Fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your deck as fusion material. Also, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn except Gem Knight monsters. When this card leaves the field, destroy that monster or monsters. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, particularly if it ends up sitting there for long enough and you fusion summon a bunch of things, your opponent just kind of MSTs it. Yeah. Because they just lose your whole board. <laughs> Activate. Activate effect. Ogre? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, 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 or like even funnier is like they've already activated it once have a, a fusion they activate it again ghost ogre because then they lose the 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 spell card they also lose the first thing that fusion summoned with it which is hilarious yep next we have a new v jump promo card uh the v jump promo this is called aileron it is a wind monster level one we do not know its effect yet all we know is that it's level one wind monster and there's some text on the side in the magazine where it premieres that says has an effect that supports sky striker so we know yeah. it's a sky striker support card but we don't know what it is and if i had to guess it's probably gonna be terrible please note that an aileron are part of the wings of an aircraft yep so cool um, next, we have some V Jump subscription cards for spring of 2022. All so, right. this is three more cards. Uh, do you want to do these? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, first off, we have Motor Violence. Oh boy. I love the name of this card. Um, it's a level six dark machine, uh, 2100 attack, 1200 defense, and it looks exactly like something Bandit Keith would run. Yes. Um, you can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. One, if a if this card or another machine monster is a normal summon or special summon to your field, you can make the summon monster gain attack equal to half its original defense. Also, its battle positions cannot be changed. These effects last till the end of your opponent's turn. Yup. Uh, and then if this tribute summon card is sent to the graveyard, special summon two engine tokens, which are machine, dark, level one... Uh, 200 attack, 200 fence, and attack position. It's it's not a good card. I mean, tokens are cool, but... But it has to be... It has to be hold, tribute summoned and sent to the graveyard. Yeah, exactly. So, ugh. Yeah. Um, next up, we have Votus, level 4 Dark Fiend Monster. 1700 attack, 1900 defense. That's real beefy. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, one, when this card is normal summon, you can excavate the top three cards of your deck. And if you do, you can banish one excavated monster to add one other monster with the same name from among the excavated cards or your deck to your hand. Shuffle the rest back into the deck. Oh, that's actually not terrible. Normal summon, excavate, banish one, the one that you want, and then search out another one. And because of the way it's worded, even if you like excavated, like let's say you, you were looking for a card that you have two copies of and you excavated both of them, you can still, get, you can still grab it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is good. I like that. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Two. Once per turn, during the end phase, if this card is in your graveyard because it was sent there this turn after being normal summoned or set, you can excavate the top three cards of your deck, and if you do, place them on the top of the deck in any order. 
Seems good. Literally stack the top three cards of your deck. That's hmm. But the fact that you have to be, but the fact that you have to use your normal summon on that. Yeah, it's kind of crusty. Yeah, it, it makes it it makes it bad, in my opinion. I could be wrong. There could, in fact, be an amazing something with it, but I doubt it. Yeah. Lastly, we have a uh, Casamolar, level three Dark Fiend effect monster. Ooh boy! A One level three Dark Fiend. Oh boy! Yeah. Uh, One thousand attack, twelve hundred defense. When this card is normal summon, aw. You can target one face-up monster your opponent controls. It gains attack equal to its original attack. Ew. Yeah. During the end phase of the next turn, destroy that monster, and if you do, your opponent takes damage equal to half of its original attack. Okay. It could be an interesting, like, board breaker card, but it's really slow. It's so... Here's the thing. If you... Even if you normal summon this... Because first off, it only activates on normal summon. Then activates effect. To do that, your opponent can just link it off well yeah on their next turn they can link their monster off and it doesn't go it doesn't pop or anything uh two at the start of your opponent's battle phase you contribute this normal summoner set card your opponent's monsters cannot attack directly this turn hmm that's also terrible yeah it's not great yeah all these cards are Rough. Not, yeah, they're not the worst thing that we've ever gotten. But they're rough around the edges. Oh, very rough around the edges. I I, I literally can't see any situation, any particular deck that could really abuse these. Right. Uh, particularly because they all rely on being normal summoned. Which is less than ideal. Oh, yeah. So, that'll be it for the new V-Jump subscription cards. Next, we have a new Magic Key card from YOD5. What is YOD5 again? Uh, I just looked it up. A new structure deck promo? Yeah, something like that. So, I guess this could be basically the announcement of a magic key structure deck? Yeah, over in the OCG? Potentially, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this would be magic key Adv avatar a star two. So, this is a rank eight light fairy effect monster, 3,000 attack, 3,000 defense. Big. Two materials is two level eight monsters. Generic, which is interesting. First effect. Once per turn, when a normal monster or a magic key monster you control destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can detach one material from this card. Inflict damage to your opponent equal to half of the original attack of the destroyed monster. Two. Once during your opponent's main phase, you can target one monster your opponent controls that has the same attribute as a normal monster or magic key monster you control or in your graveyard. Detach one material from this card and if you do, banish that target. That's interesting. Um, I don't know if it's good, but it might be interesting for the magic key strategy. They do lack interruptions. So, but the issue is my biggest issue with it anyway, is that that, that effect is all right, but it's a rank eight, meaning that it's also having to, having to fight with Dragoobleon. Right. For the rank eight target. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, interesting, but I don't know if it's good. Yeah, I don't think I don't think so either. Like, again, its biggest issue is it being the, you know, it being a rank eight. So it's got a lot of stuff. It's got to fight for content for a you know, right, right. And that's even if they want to bother with it. Yeah, uh, going rank three. You know what I mean? Yeah. So rank three, rank eight. My bad. <laughs> yeah, that'll be that. Let that's all the new cards we have to talk about. Let's talk for a minute. Um, while we're talking about that, though, I did look up, I did Google YOD4. Five. No, I Google YOD4. Hold on. Uh huh. Because when I did Google YOD5, it only brought up that card. But when I did the four, it was like, uh, like, uh, how, how we have, like, the duels packs. Yeah. The OCG version of those. But that would be the deck building pack. Um, hold on. Let me bring it back up. So, cause I, and it, the tags on it is Yu Gi Oh! Structures. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I feel I, like it's got to be a structured deck card. Maybe because, like, like I said, when I type in YOD four Yu Gi Oh, because you don't, you get like a bunch of Yoda stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I, I get uh, duels pack Legend Duelist four. Interesting. Which was the all female? Uh, it was the OCG version of the all female set. Oh, okay. The one with, with like my Valentine, Alexis Rhodes, the legendary duelists. Yes, that's it. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, they but they call the OCG version of his Duelist Pack Legend Duelist Four. So it's it's the Duelist Pack, not necessarily. Well, no, because that well, no, because I actually looked at the actual prefixes. That's DP twenty one. Weird. I have no idea what that is then. Yeah, we really don't have an, we really don't know exactly what that is yet. I would imagine it's a structure deck though, just based it, off tags and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It might be a case of it's why cuz like cuz their structure decks come with packs that have it like holographic versions. It might be coming it might be out of that. Right. Okay, so let's talk for a little bit about YCS Charlotte. What do you say? Oh, yeah. So, we got the announcement that there was going to be YCS Charlotte on April 9th and 10th. And our first thought was, we can't afford to go to that. So, so we that, weren't going to go. Yeah, that's in North Carolina? Yes, in like three weeks. Yeah. But we decided to go anyway. <laughs> yeah, we everything because we had some friends who were also like, yeah, we want to go. Yeah, so basically, we initial reaction was, we can't go to that because we priced plane tickets. Well, for us to fly from where we live, we have to drive four hours to a major airport to get flying to be reasonably cheap because like all we have around us is like small little regional airports. So we would end up having to drive an hour to one of the regional airports, catch a flight out of the regional airport to a major airport, then catch a flight from the major airport to Charlotte. So in total, a trip doing that is like 600 bucks, 700 bucks round trip for the flights, right? Give or take. Right. That's per person. Right. Which is just not really feasible for us when compared to Los Angeles for Pasadena, we were literally looking at like 260 a person for mm -hmm. plane tickets round trip. And that's not even flying like spirit where you're sitting on top of crates of chickens. That's flying like yeah, or, Southwest. Yeah. 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 You know where they du just kind of duct tape you to the side of the plane. Yeah. Yeah. And tell you good luck. That spirit. Yep. Waffle house in the sky. Waffle house in the sky. Yeah. I can fly twice as high. <laughs> So we were going, we were looking at flights and we we're like, it's just not possible off flights, you know? And then, cause even then, like for us, we could drive to New Orleans or Dallas, which is about four hours, three, a little over three and a half, four hours. Big on traffic. Yeah. And New Orleans works best for us because I can leave my car at a relative's house, get somebody drops off at the airport. Yeah. And then we can then fly out, but then we got to get a rental car. And then it turns out, to fly out of New Orleans, you still have to catch a connecting flight because they don't really have airlines that run direct flights from New Orleans to Charlotte, except that are like really weird times of the day that yeah. just don't really work for us. So it was like, we'd, okay. Yeah, we'd either begin there super early in the morning, like what, two days before? Pretty much, yeah. It was either like we fly in like two days before and I have to take a bunch of time off work and then we fly back like two days after like and get back to New Orleans at like midnight and then I have to drive back and take another like three days off work for that, which is just not feasible for me. Yeah, that's literally an entire week off of work just for travel. Yeah, not even for the event itself, just for traveling. Yeah. So and then if you do that, not only are you taking all the extra time off work, but you're also having to pay for the Airbnb for extra days and things like extra that. Extra food. Exactly. And then rental car because you flew. Mm -hmm. So it just gets like obscenely expensive. So there's three of us going and for the three of us to go. By the time we figured out airfare, rental car, Airbnb for like five days, everything, it was going to be like three to four thousand dollars. Yeah. And we were just like, it's just not feasible. Yeah. A grand per person. Over. Yeah. Over a grand. Let's just say a grand to be conservative. No, 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 no. To be in La La Land of it's cheaper than we thought right, it was going to exactly. be. Right. Exactly. Because we're still looking at like 600 bucks a flight. Yeah. Plus, once you really think about it. It's like four hours of driving to get there. And then the flight plus the connecting flight yeah. plus the layover was like eight hours of travel flying anyway. So it's like 12 hours of travel. Of and just then we, sitting there. Yeah. And then we looked it up on Google Maps and we're like, wait a minute. It's only 12 and a half hours to just drive. My, I have a little tiny little car that gets like 40 miles to the gallon. Huh. And we started doing the math and we were like, we could just drive there for like, we could leave after I get off work Thursday night, drive up there, get there Friday morning, and then just 
be there Friday morning, register Friday, have an Airbnb Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night, and leave either after the event Sunday or after we record an episode in Charlotte at the Airbnb and get back around lunchtime Monday. So I'll only mm-hmm. have to take Friday and Monday off work, mm-hmm. be back at work Tuesday. And yeah, it's a lot of travel, especially considering the weekend before we're doing two regionals, which is a combined like 10 hours of flight or driving. Yeah, 10, 10 hours of driving round trip over the course of two days. And it's like, or 11. Yeah, like 11. So it was like, yeah, to drive 11 hours one weekend and then drive then the very next weekend, drive 25. Yeah. You know, round trip. It's just like a lot, but it's worth it. We're here for the grind. Oh, yeah. Uh, particularly, do we get a uh, fourth person? No, they had to cancel out. So it's just the Dang. three of us for now. Yeah. So I, I've got a couple of feelers reached out for. <clears throat> to see if a fourth person wants to stay with us at our Airbnb. Yeah, to kind of get costs a little bit lower. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we we did the math. We looked at it. It's only going to be a couple hundred bucks in gas for us to go, r- like, round trip. Even with gas prices so high, because my car, again, it's a tiny little car. It's got a small gas tank. Yeah. It only costs, like, 40, 45 bucks to fill yeah, it up. Yeah, and you'll go, what, 400 miles on that? Yep, 400 yeah. miles is what I get on a tank. It's about, it's about what I get on my little car. <laughs> yeah. But I don't have as good a mileage, which is weird. I get like 30. I get like 35 to 40, depending. Yeah, depending upon traffic. My car is also several years newer. So. Exactly. But that's that's not that's beside the point. Yeah, yeah. So I went ahead and got an oil change done, got all everything checked out, and I should be good to go. So we're going to be making some serious trips here over the next couple of weeks. Um, oh, ho- yeah. Hopefully we won't be too tired to record. But... Um, we might skip an episode at some point just because of how much we're traveling, but we're going to yeah. try to make it work. Oh, yeah. So, but I wanted to say, if you're going to be at YCS Charlotte, let us know. We would love to meet everybody that's going to be there. We would love to hang out with people, um, sign cards, whatever. We'll be wearing our Top Cut podcast shirts at the event. Heck yeah. Yeah. So be sure to come say hey to us. We would love to say hey to everybody. It's really exciting. This is our first time going to a major event since we've been content creators. So, you know, we're excited. It's we're we're really thrilled to have this opportunity. Woo! So I mean it's also I mean it's also our first major event since YCS Austin 2013. There you go. Yep. That's the only other YCS we've been to other than like remote. So this yeah. is our first YCS in almost a decade. In fact, it's nine years, like to the month. Yeah, which so, is insane to think about. Yes, and our regionals in a week and a half now, two weeks, something like that. Those regionals, that is going to be our first regionals in about that long. A little, little, probably like more like eight years and some months. Yeah. Yeah. But still. Not quite nine, but close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, because that's about the time that we went. That's about the time we got out of the game. I'm just going to put it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're really excited. Um, We really hope to see everybody there, to hang out with people, say hi, see, uh, meet all the different content creators that we've worked with and all the different players that we've worked with over the last year or so recording this podcast. And it really feels like a culmination of efforts, you know? Yeah. So, because I feel like if we weren't so invested in the game at this point, if we weren't so invested in the content creation side of this, we probably wouldn't be going. Oh, no, no, I I, I certainly wouldn't. Yeah, so, I mean, if you really think about it, it's like, um, we're not just going to get content, you know? We're going to meet people, to see the people that we've... Yeah talk to all this time you know to see all of our friends that we've never had a chance to meet in person yeah um it's really surreal and it's really exciting and it's worth the um 2500 miles or oh, no eight, 1800 miles round trip G- give or take yeah 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 so um it's worth the drive i think it's worth hanging out it's worth seeing everybody um we might be in our Discord server in VC and in late into the night while we're driving with needing people to keep us awake. <laughs> <laughs> Very possibly. Yeah, so if you're going to be 
Uh, if you're around and in the Discord server, let us know because we're going to need somebody to chat with to keep us awake on the drive. Yep. It's so, going to be rough. Yeah. And we like talking. We're used to talking a lot. So that'd be good. Um, let's take just a minute to do an ad read. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Real quick. Okay. So a huge, huge, huge thank you to our sponsor, ETB Games in Alexandria, Louisiana. They are, of course, our locals and our sponsor. They are your one-stop shop to get everything that you need for all of your Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, Digimon, Card Fight Vanguard needs, whatever game you're playing. They have the accessories that you need to support you. So you can buy singles. You can buy sealed product. You can buy deck boxes, sleeves, binders, uh, card carrying cases, whatever you need. They have all of that there. They also have figurines pre-painted and not painted as well as the paint to do that if you want to. They have books, they have tabletop mats, they have video game area, they have designated area for tabletop gaming, they have Warhammer, they have D&D. They have everything that you need for all of your various hobbies. So be sure to check out ETB Games in Alexandria, Louisiana. Their link is in the description down below. And every month they do do a ETB Battle City Monthly is what they call them. They try to do like a, a big tournament about once a month. Sometimes it's case tournaments, whatever, what have you. Um, but we'll be sure to announce the next one when we have a set date for it. But in the meantime, be sure to check them out. And their link is in the description down below. So let's go ahead and move on into the main topic of discussion for today. So we were trying to think about what to talk about for our like our secondary segment because it wasn't like a ton of new cards. We didn't have any guests. So we wanted to kind of go back to our roots a little bit, which is some suggestions that we had for budget because we acknowledge that an enormous amount of the player base is budget players, which is not a bad thing. That's really no. normal, especially for people just getting back into the game. Being or budget is common oh yeah or people just getting in the game for the first time right exactly so new or returning players usually are playing on some sort of a budget which is just normal and expected now to be fair there are some players who have a budget of like 50 bucks there are players whose budget is like oh i have like 1200 just to slap around yeah and it's whatever you want to do but i promise you once you get into it the best thing that i can tell you is commit to it right so a lot of people say ah you know i don't really want to spend say 50 dollars on a budget on a competitive deck but i need a couple of cards so they'll go to walmart and they'll buy you know five six packs of sealed product and it's like okay well let's say you bought six packs of sealed product after taxes you're looking at what 30 dollars give or take okay so you spend 30 dollars on sealed product when you could have gone to say your local OTS store and out of their case, out of their singles or even their bulk or even their bulk, you could have pulled out some really, really useful cards. So like some of the ones you're about to talk about in a bit. Exactly. So while it is understandable that you can't afford some the of these $40 premium gold access code, uh, access code talker, right. Or the 120, $130 prosperities and droplets and things. Cause like I that. can't. <laughs> right. If you can't afford those cards, that's fine. Because realistically, we're you can to play help. this game on a competitive level without them. Oh yeah, we're, we're, and we're here to help kind of, we're here to kind of help guide you to some cards that kind of do the same thing that those really expensive cards do, kind of, but also not. Right. You'll see what we mean in a minute. Yeah, I think the first thing to really understand about this and this is really critical we're not going to sit here and lie to you. Okay. We're not going to tell you that these cards are as good because I'm just going to be honest. They're not. There's a reason those, this, there's a reason a pot of prosperity is a hundred dollars. And there's a reason why. And it's not just because it hasn't had a reprint yet. It's the only card that does what it does. Well, I mean, there, that is also part of the reason why it's that expensive, but it's not the main reason. Sure. If it had, but if it, if they reprinted it right now in a structure deck, Oh, it'd, it'd be like, a, like, even if it was a common in that structure deck, it would still be like a 20 to $30 common. It would probably be $8. I would say eight to 10. And that's a pretty conservative number. Oh, yeah. So during print, after it goes out of print, it'll crank up to $20, $30 a copy. Like exactly. Like, like the uh, Ash, Ash Blossom did. Exactly. So let's talk for a minute. We're going to go through, we're going to say the card that's expensive, why it's expensive and then give you a reasonable alternative. So I want to start with like Caleb mentioned access code talker. So 
If you want an access code talker right now, you either have the maximum gold printing, which is around $40, or you have the um, the original secret rare printing, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of like $80 to $90. Hold on. I just double checked the price on that. It went up. I, I checked it yesterday and it was 40 Yeah. Now they're 55 and the secrets are a hun- or, uh, are 100 Yeah. So there you go. Um, access code is not a card that's exactly budget for most people. It's not in a lot of people's budgets and that's really understandable. What access code allows you to do is it requires two plus effect monsters and it is a generic link for and for every attribute of link on your field in your graveyard, you can pop a card on your opponent's field. So by banishing a by right, banishing right. A card. So example, I have a light, a dark, a fire and a wind in my graveyard. Hmm. I can activate access code, banish the wind, pop a card on my opponent's field, then activate it again, banish the dark. And I can only do it once per turn per attribute, right? So yeah. if there's four attributes, I can do it four times, but I can only use each of those attributes once. So if I have two wins, I can't do it twice with the yeah. two wins. Also, if you sync, when it, whenever you link summon into him, was that synchro summon? When you link summon into him, mm-hmm. you target one of those link monsters and he gains attack equal to that link rating times a thousand. A thousand. So if you use a link three and another monster to make him, you can target the link three that you used and he becomes 5,300, right? He becomes 5,300 deck. So he's really a a useful OTK tool. Yeah. So with all of that said, there's not a card that does what access code does. And also your opponent cannot respond to his effects. So that's the big thing is that no matter what effect you activate, your opponent can't respond to it. Right. So that's the thing. That's the big thing about them. Yeah, they can activate cards in resolution, but they can't activate in response. So if I, if my opponent has a set card and I summon access code, and let's say they have an imperm one field, right? If I activate, say I, a perfect example, I link off a tri brigade Shurag the Ominous Omen, who a, re- a link four, and it's like- tri brigade Rugal. Yeah, right. That's perfect because Rugal's a three. Yeah, and Shurag can activate as one. Yeah. Okay, so I can link them off. I can activate Rugal Chain Link 1, Shurag Chain Link 2, Access Code Chain Link 3. So my opponent can't respond to my Access Code Talker because it's Chain Link 3. Mm-hmm. That means my Shurag and my Rugal are pretty much going to resolve no matter what. Yep. So it allows me to resolve my Chain Links. And then what it also allows me to do is it I can target either the Rugal or the Shurag and gain attack. So he can go up to like... 6300 right there oh yeah no you know yeah you know if you target the um sure yeah the sure egg who's rank who's link four he becomes 6300 yeah which is big yeah and it turns into an extension because of sure right but exactly the thing that is really critical to remember here is if your opponent summons an access code on you then sure you let all that resolve and then in resolution you activate the imperm but if say your if your opponent forgets to activate doesn't realize they can activate imperm in resolution or something like that then you can you can really get their goat right because then you activate access code banish one of those materials from your graveyard and then pop their imperm that's set or pop a monster on their field Mm -hmm. and they can't respond to the activation of his effect right there so it really requires your opponent to understand how to time the re- the response to access code and that that trickiness to it and that ability to insulate itself and your combos and be an otk tool is what makes it so expensive and so good also the fact that it's only had one reprint as of right now yeah now so. some alternatives yeah so there are a couple of cards that aren't quite as good but are really great cards in their own respect. So if you don't want to spend the 50 to 55 for access code, you, you can spend like 20. If you're splurging big time and getting the most expensive copy of this thing, right? You can get Boral Sword, right? Or you can go down to like, I think $8, $6 to $8 if you want the Gold Rare alternate art. And if you don't want the alternate yeah, art, he's six bucks. Yeah. And if you don't want the alternate art, you can spend 11 and get the OG the, uh, art, the original yeah. art Gold Rare. Or, yeah. Um, so the, so Boral Sword is still this OTK tool because his shtick is, um, first off, whenever he attacks a special summon monster, he can gain, he can have that monster lose half of its attack and he gains that much. Right. So let's say he acted, he attacks a sure egg. I'll use it as an example. It's yeah. got 3000 attack, easy math. So you declare attack on sure egg, effective Boral Sword, 
Shurag goes down to 15 and Borosaur goes up to 4,500. Destroying it, but then also inflict, but then you, your opponent takes 3,000 damage, which is just a direct attack. Also, your opponent cannot respond to that effect. No, 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 they can respond to that. But also, activates... Borosaur can't be destroyed by battle. Yeah, they can respond to that, but it activates during the damage step. Which is I thought Borosword said on the card that it can't be responded to. It does, but with its other effect. Oh, okay, the other effect. Okay. With the effect where he gains attack and makes him lose, it happens during the damage step, so there's not a lot that can even respond to to begin with. Right. His other effect is that during the battle phase, doesn't matter who's, you can target one card on the one monster on the field that's in attack position, change it to defense position, he can attack again. Right, so let's say I have Borosword and Zeus on my field. I can attack with Borosword, use his effect, gain attack, and then I can attack with Zeus, and then I can activate Boral Sword, change Zeus to defense, and then attack again with Boral Sword. So it's a great card. There's a reason that it's still like that eight to twenty dollar range, depending yeah. on what copy you get. But it's definitely worth the investment, and it's three plus effect monster, so it takes a little bit more investment. Yeah. But That's I think that it's still worthy of being the second place to access code. Oh yeah. Now something else you have to keep in mind that with his attack modulation thing, only activates when he attacks. But his double attack thing can be activated during the battle phase. Right. So even if your opponent makes something that's bigger than it and they declare an attack, you can just activate Boral Sword to, uh, at the start of the battle phase. You can activate Boral Sword's effect, switch to defense mode. Right. So it's an interesting little... Um, well, you'd have to do an attack declaration because you can't... You, as non-turn player can't activate yeah. Boral Sword before your opponent has a chance to do something in yeah, battle yeah. phase because they have turn player priority. Yeah, but you get what I'm saying. Like, you can just force, you can target one of their their only monsters that's bigger than at Boral Sword and flop to defense mode. Right. The one thing that's really a drawback here is that it can't do that with Link monsters because they don't have a defense position. But exactly. But it's still a great card. Oh yeah, like literally anything else, the number one card in my mind that comes that comes into mind is exactly uh, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. Yeah. Because Ultimate Conductor Tyranno can't even flip him face down. That's true. Yeah. It's a, it's a really interesting dynamic that that card has, and I think that it is the second best option behind Access Code. Also, let's say you're, you're running a deck that has issues, but it can make like a Link 2 and then get out the other get out the other two materials. If you make IP Mask Arena, get out the other two and then go into Brawl Sword, he can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. Right, because IP makes it immune to card effects, and then... Boral Sword is already immune to battle. So. Yeah. So they so if they destroy can't destroy him. Yeah. They have to banish or send him to the graveyard. Yeah, so it's it's a good card. Um, but there also is a second option if you can't actually afford the Boral Sword even. If you don't want to pay the however much, you know, six, eight, ten, twelve, yeah. fifteen dollars for Boral Sword. Yeah. So and the other option is Topologic Zero Boros. Zero Boros is another card that is Honestly, not as good as as um, access code or Boral Sword, but you can get it for a dollar. Yeah, so Zero Boros is a really interesting card. It's a Link Four that says you can. It's two plus effect monsters. You can not special summon. You cannot summon or set monsters to any extra monster zone that this card points to. It gains 200 attack for each banished card. If another monster is special summoned to a zone a link monster points to while this monster is on the field, banish all cards on the field. And then once per turn during the standby phase of your next turn after this card is banished by its own effect, special summon this banished card. So it makes it, it's a good link for 3000 attack. It can be used to clear your opponent's board. And uh, um, it also punishes your opponent for daring to link summon, summon. in its link zone. Yeah. Well, no, because no, you can't. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll know summoning into any mo any link monster zone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, granted, you can't once you make this thing, you can't link summon anymore unless you like before you may had another link monster pointing to a different zone that it's not pointing to. But if your opponent like link summons into a link zone at all, they the entire they the the, 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 board, yeah, the entire board gets banished. Yeah. Which makes him beefier when he comes back. Right. So Past access code, you also have Pot of Prosperity. Pot of Prosperity is an interesting card that... One second. <coughs> Bless Ooh, you. Excuse me. Wow. Pot of Prosperity is a great card. It allows you to banish three or six cards from your extra deck face down, and then you can reveal cards from the top of your deck equal to the number of cards you banish, and add one of those cards from your deck to your hand, and put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. 
Also, your opponent takes half battle damage for the rest of this turn, and you can't draw cards for the rest of the turn. So, first off, this card has two printings. One of them is a Starlight, and the other one is the original Secret. Yeah, all in the same set, too. Yeah. So, uh, over a year ago now at this point, the Blazing current, Vortex. Yeah. The current Secret is net currently priced at $122. Yeah, it's a good card. But a lot of the price of this card is that Blazing Vortex doesn't have a lot of other cards that are really worth anything. The only other card in that set that's really worth anything as a secret rare is Underworld Goddess. Yeah. And past that, you're looking at supers like Tri-Brigade Kit to get value out of yeah. this set. Yeah, and uh, isn't that where Brabram came from, or did she come from the next set? That's the next set. Okay. So when you look at Prosperity, there's a lot of factors that make the card expensive. No real reprints yet is the main thing of it. Yeah. Also, it's kind of the only card that does what it does. But there's some other alternatives that are not quite as expensive. They're also not quite as good. So, for example, you have the closest thing is probably Pot of Extravagance. Pot of Extravagance has a few printings, three or four at this point. And the lowest printing is the most recent gold rare, which probably in the range of like six bucks, eight bucks, somewhere in that uh, range. The premium gold Pot of Extravagance is 15. Okay, that's the next. Okay, well, that's the next best thing. So... You for that it is banish three or six cards from your extra deck and then at, draw at the start of your main phase one. Yeah. Also, it's at random. Yeah. So you banish your cards at random, so you could really mess up your extra deck doing this. But you draw one or two cards depending on how many you banish. Yeah, so if you three banish three, you draw one. Banish six, you draw two. So it's got a huge drawback. But in decks that don't really need the extra deck, like a la Dino, right? Um, Alter Guys, yep. things like that. It's a Trap really, lich. yeah, it's a really good option. So in a lot of your control decks or decks like even Fluanderese, mm -hmm. it's a great option. Um, uh, Monarchs, love it. Yeah. So I would say that Extrav is the next best option, but past that, uh, Pot of Desires, even though it's limited to one, is probably the next best option if you want a pot card to kind of get cards out of your deck. Yeah. And after that, it's Pot of Duality, but that's really only applicable for like Ex super duper stun decks. I would or almost say, oh, I would, I would exactly say, Flunder. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, Pot because Pot of Duality uh, locks you out of special summoning for the turn. Yeah, which is rough, but which back in the day was like okay, I'll just. Set three pass. Or no, no, I'll just normal summon card card D, activate this, and then in face, fake card card D, tribute, draw two. Exactly. Go. So it, Set four, go. Yeah, it, it really does. Back in the day, when the game was a lot slower, it wasn't the biggest deal in the world. Now it's really rough, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah. So, um, In certain decks. Yeah. Uh, next, you have uh, Forbidden Droplet. Forbidden Droplet is currently like 110 for the reprint and like 130 for the original printing. Both as secret rares. Because for whatever reason, they decided to print it as an ulti, a secret, and then another secret. And short print it as well. Yeah. So All three times. Yeah. So it's really hard to say. Well, okay. Uh, you can't say that the ulti was necessarily short printed because it was in an OTS pack. And you that, can't say that's the, fair. And you can't say the original secret was short printed because it wasn't. It was just one of 10 secret rares in a core set. Yeah. So, but here, it was actually short printed in the side set Brothers of Legend. Yeah. Because if you look at the pull rates for Forbidden Droplet versus other cards, I mean, we're talking about two Forbidden Droplets per case versus 22 Yowies, you oh, know? Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, yeah, that, that's majorly short printed. I see what you mean by short printed now. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. So... When you look at Forbidden Droplets, it is a card that is very unique in a lot of ways. So Forbidden Droplet says, when you activate this card, discard a number of cards, or send any number of cards from your hand or field to the graveyard. Tar uh, choose, not target, choose yep. that many face-up monsters on your opponent's side of the field and negate their effects. Also, your opponent cannot respond to it with the same kinds of cards that you sent. So... If you send a monster and a spell, your opponent can cannot respond with monsters or spells. If you send a spell trap, they can't activate spells or traps. If you send all three, they can't respond to it at all. Pretty much. So, Forbidden Droplet is another one of those cards that your opponent can't respond to. It does something very unique. It lets you break boards, and in some decks, it can even really help you. Non-targeting break boards. Right, so it doesn't target, which is huge. 
And it also, not only does it negate their effects, it reduces their attack by half and then negates their effects. Yeah. So let's say your opponent puts out some insane board, right? We're talking three negate Borlode Savage, four negate Opelousa, you know, uh, Herald of the Arclight, just everything that you can think of. Actually, Herald of the Arclight wouldn't work. Uh, Technically, now that would Borlode Savage. No, 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 Borlode Savage works. Herald of the Arclight doesn't because well, you can't discard monsters. Well, no, because I was saying the reason, the only reason why Borlode Savage doesn't work is because he just, he just wouldn't gain, he would just lose the attack. Tem he, he gains from the equipped Link monster temporarily. Okay, so here's how that works. Let's say they have a four negate Opelousa. Yeah. You activate Forbidden Droplets, send a monster, negate Opelousa. What happens is Opelousa gets reduced to 1600 and then its effect gets negated. Yeah. And then after the end phase, when Droplet wears off, it gets reduced to zero. Yup. So in the instance of Borlode Savage, how that resolves is... Borlode Savage, let's say you equipped it with an Aurordon, right? So that puts it at 4050. And you activate, it drops down to 2025. Which is disgusting. Yeah, it's gross. And then its effect gets negated, so it doesn't have the negate anymore. So then, in resolution, in the standby phase, or in resolution, it would, I believe, go back to 3000. Yeah, during the end phase. Yeah, during the end phase. Um, but I don't know because well, it's no, still equipped. It might go back to forty fifty. No, no. In that case, it would because it's checking what it's uh, what's equipped to it for the attack gain. Okay. Well, yeah. ask a judge. I don't. Yeah, I don't remember. It's been explained to me before, but I don't remember. Yeah, Borlod Savage is a weird one. But the point is, if your opponent puts out this crazy board, and also ask of Borlod Savage if he's negated keeps. The counters. The counters. The, That's what gives him the negates or the counters. He even if, even if he. I keeps, think he does keep the counters. Yeah. Um. Because, yeah. Because like it, it, it doesn't really matter for the most part. Because usually, if you activate droplets and do all that, you're probably gonna break the board and remove the monsters from the field anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But if you leave the bore load on, bore load on, bore load sat, bore, eh, bore load savage on board. Yeah. Lots of bees there. Um. Do keep in mind, he might still be able to start negating you once per turn again after after this, but he won't be able to negate you at all this turn. Yeah, we're not sure. I'm just going to be honest with you there. He might be able to. I don't quite remember how that exactly but again, resolves. But then, again, if you're negating, you know... Everything with droplets, you should be cracking the board anyway. Yeah. Okay, Absolutely. I'm going to be really honest. I don't want to tell you something that's wrong, audience, so just ask your local judge yeah. about that exact interaction. But that's not the point. That's not the point. That's even we're, if you're, we're getting off topic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... The budget alternatives for this card. There's a couple of them. I would say that the best one is Dark Ruler No More. Dark Ruler No More is a spell card that says when you activate this card, negate the effects of all face-up monsters on your opponent's side of the field, and your opponent cannot respond to this card with monster effects. Also, your opponent takes no battle damage for the rest of the turn after you activated this card. So it is a good blanket negation. It breaks the opponent's board, and they can't respond. What makes this card weaker is first off it's a normal spell not a quick play right and it also can be responded to by spells and traps or so, even worse um in the instance of a monster effect that targets to negates like chi Zhao, activate a spell or a trap and then chain the target negate to target and negate it right so chi Zhao exactly doesn't work right there because it's only for monster effects but oh. something like red eyes abyss is that what it is oh no no a hot red dragon archfiend abyss yeah so that's you a perfect example you could like something else you could very well do is like activate it for ben chalice targeting the hot red dragon archfiend abyss and then chain, chain abyss to your own chalice and then negate the but then after it resolves you lose your negate because it's only once per turn anyway yeah then he gains an extra 400 attack which brings us to our other card, which is Forbidden Chalice. Yeah. Chalice says it's a quick play spell. It says target one monster on the field, negate its effects. Also, it gains 400 attack. So it targets, which is worse, but it's a quick play spell card, which is nice. And it can be smart one for one negation. So Chalice is also a good option, but I would say that Dark Ruler No More is far and away the best replacement. Yeah. Don't yeah. let it, don't be fooled that it is it has like a little workaround don't be fooled by that oh, because, no, no. because it's still a great they, card because then they have to very specifically have the workaround and they probably have to use that workaround in a way that's like for example activating forbidden, forbidden chalice there yeah that's a wasted chalice yeah they get to keep their other negates on board uh, all their other monster effects 
but that's a chalice that could have gone to negating something to a normal summon or something. Right. You know, um, now, th- now let's see. Dark rulers are last time I looked like five bucks a pop for the common. Yeah. If you can get five or six bucks for the commons out yeah. of the, uh, out of the structure deck Spirit or charmers. Yeah. Or you can pay like, I think 12, 13 for the secret rares. Yeah. Uh, forbidden chalices though, by the way, they have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine copies below four dollars. Yeah. So I don't, I don't mean nine total cards. I mean nine different reprints. Printings, yeah. Below four dollars. One of them is the Met Premium Gold, and then the next up above it is the Battle Pack Three Mosaic Rare, which is actually not that bad. Yeah, it's like six bucks. From there, you have like the gold, uh, and then blah 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 from up there. All right, we have a couple other ones that we're gonna hit kind of quickly. Yeah. So I want to talk about Lightning Storm. Lightning uh-huh. Storm is hilariously expensive. So don't get me wrong. It's a great, great card. But you're looking at $300 for the Starlight, $120 for the Collector's Rare, $96 for the Original Secret Rare. You're looking at $70 for the King's Court Ultra Rare. So this card's had a lot of reprints and they're all expensive. Well, it's not that it's had a lot of reprints. It's only been printed in two sets. It was yeah. printed in Ignition Assault as the Secret and Starlight and printed in King's Court as the Ultra and Collectors. Oh, yeah, I'm just saying there's a lot of various, you know, printings of it and right. it's still expensive. Yeah, so Lightning Storm says if you control no face-up cards, activate one of these effects. Destroy all attack position monsters your opponent controls or destroy all spell traps your opponent controls. And you can only activate once per turn. So... Lightning Storm is a very good card. It's a very good generic board wipe, and it gives you the versatility of wiping monsters or spell traps. But if you wanted to have a much, 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 much cheaper option, you can either play Regeki, which is three dollars for a super. Right. So Regeki, you can get them as low as like you said, like three dollars. You can, in fact, you can even get the Prismatic Secret for like three bucks. Yeah, I have that one. Right. It's very nice. But don't also keep in mind that this card recently came up to three on a recent ban list. Yeah, so it's definitely an option. Or you can use, and it just says destroy all monsters in your opponent's field. Doesn't so, target. Right. Keep mine. Or you can use the Egyptian God Deck Super, which is about four dollars. Yeah. For, I mean, uh, for Harp, or you can play Harpy's Feather Duster, which yeah. has a super rare reprint in the Egyptian God Structure decks for about four dollars. Yeah. So the so if you so just run three Regaki and one Harpy's Feather Duster, and that's three, six, nine, thirteen bucks. Right. And functionally, Harpy's Feather Duster destroy all spell traps, and it actually is kind of nice because it gives you a little bit of an option to play around with if your opponent like has sets four back row and passes. You can play for a second, bait out something like a Solemn Judgment, and then activate Harpy's Feather Duster. Exactly, because you can activate Harpy's Feather Duster and Regeki. If you already have stuff on your board. Unlike Lightning Storm, which is Lightning Storm's biggest weakness. Right. There's one other card here that is worth mentioning, but it's also pretty expensive, if I'm being honest. And that's Evenly Matched. So, Evenly Matched is a really interesting card. It is a trap card. It comes in secret rare out of circuit break or secret rare out of the 2018 mega 10, right? Or ultra rare from ghost of the past or dual power. Ultras are about 24, 25 secrets are 30 to 34, depending on the printing. Yeah. So, but I mean, you're still looking at at worst $75 for a play set versus 70 for a single lightning storm. Exactly. So it says at the end of the battle phase, if your opponent controls more cards than you do, you can make your opponent banish cards from their field face down. So they control the same number of cards as you do. If you control no cards, you can activate this card from your hand. So the big drawback here is you can lose your battle phase to do this, but meaning you can't OTK them. Right. But what you can do is you can just go draw for turn. Standby, main, enter battle, end of battle, activate evenly, wipe their board. Oh, yeah. But the key thing, though, is that this card is very obviously telegraphed. You really just draw for turn, go standby, main, battle. Yeah, it is easily telegraphed, but the potential to banish your opponent's entire field face down is amazing. Or even forcing your opponent to use one of their negates. Exactly. Because then you just go, okay, cool, main phase two, start playing. Exactly. So... It's an interesting way to play around certain board states. And also, if your opponent doesn't realize it and they MST or Cosmic your evenly, then they actually have to banish all of the cards on their field, which is kind of funny. Mm-hmm. So, um, And one last really, really quick one. 
uh, you have Infinite Impermanence, which is like a $15 card right now, even for the Super. Yeah. You can use Effect Veiler, which is like a 3 to $4 card. Or it's, Chalice, which we already talked about. Yeah, yeah. It's both fair budget alternatives, although Imperm is, in my opinion, better. Well, the reason why Imperm... Well, the big reason why Imperm is better is because it's good going... going First or second. Compared to Chalice and, and Veiler, where Veiler is only good going... F well... It's best going first. It's still usable going second. Chalice, you cannot use on if you're if you're going second. It's it's the other way around. Valor's best going second. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, because Chalice is two. I see where my brain got, got switched. Got now. your wires crossed. Yeah, yeah. My bad. It happens. Okay, so if Chal so if you're going first with Chalice, you can set it and then just activate it. If you're going second, you can just activate it to negate to force a negate on your opponents because you can either, that, yeah, yeah, you get the point. Yeah, a Veiler though can trip stop them from playing all together. Right. Okay. But Imperm is definitely better. That's gonna wrap it up though. So we're gonna do podcast question of the day. How do you feel about YCS Charlotte heading towards 45 minute time rolls? Was the last one. Uh, we got. I put. I'm gonna be honest with you. I posted this question a day and a half late because I got caught up with work and I forgot. Yeah. But. We, got a, we still got some responses. So on Twitter, people said uh, mixed feelings, but it'll make the event longer, but it makes things probably a little bit better as far as the new time rules are concerned, yeah. giving people a little bit of extra time to play. Also, I don't attend YCSs, but my locals does either 40 or 45 minutes, so it usually doesn't affect me. Um, more than enough time, more than enough time, things like that. Um, some people didn't even know that it was 45 minute rounds, which is, I mean, honestly understandable. It's kind of a side note when you think about the announcement of return to yeah. in-person play. Um, and oh, then in definitely. the, big in the, time. Yeah. And then in the discord server, um, <laughs> we've just got people that said, Hey, I mean, as long as I've got burn mechanics, I can still do that in the last five minutes. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> yep. And our new podcast question of the day is I want to know what deck are you building right now? Uh, be sure to let us know on Twitter and on Discord. And in the meantime, be sure to check out ETB Games. Their link is in the description down below. Check out our playmat. It is on Imperium Duelist. That is a link down below. Our Discord, our Twitter at Top Cut Podcast. Be sure to check out Team Dark Arm Dealings. Their link is in the description down below. That is our sister channel on YouTube. And Super cool people. Of course, be sure to check out our Patreon, our TCG Player Affiliate link. Be sure to leave a rating on Apple or Spotify. And thank you all so, so much for listening. And have a great week. We'll see you Friday. Take care, everybody.